this meant to be an upgrade. Well, isn't it a downgrade because that's a small turbo? Yeah, it's definitely smaller, but that one's meant to be more efficient, so wouldn't it be better? And also makes more boost. I suppose so. Hmm, I don't know. Let's just call it a change. Change is as good as a holiday, mate. That's true, especially when you're locked down. Today on the Skid Factory, we're chasing efficiency. Welcome back to the Skid Factory. If you caught the last patrol episode where we talked about the car and what we liked and didn't like, uh, you would have heard me mention that I was going to change a couple of things. One of those things is the turbo. This is the original turbo. It is an S362. It's pretty big. It's built for high power and it can do that, but there's a price. It is a little bit lazy to come on. You don't notice it too much in this car because it's not real big, but you do notice the smoke that you get while you're waiting for it to come on boost. So this is the turbo that we're going to replace it with. I've already sort of fitted most of it up and started fabricating a few things. Um, had a bit of spare time, so got stuck into it. It is uh, what they call a HX Super 9. So it's uh, basically a, a bit of a parts bag of whole set parts, which is the original turbo manufacturer for Cummins stuff. It is a HX35 core with a HY35, which is a lot later model. Uh, exhaust housing, uh, nine centimeter housing. Uh, it's got a billet compressor and a 67 mil turbine. So the big difference between these is not so much in the compressor side. Um, they both got billet compressors. This is two mil smaller in major and minor, so here and here, than that. So not a huge difference there, although two mil does make a difference. The big difference is in the turbine. The turbine and this is huge. Uh, it's about six mil larger than that one and the housing is also bigger. Six mil doesn't sound like much but it, it that's that's massive in, in relation to turbine wheels. So um, of course this one could make more power because the turbine is bigger and that's going to allow more gas flow but the trade-off is it takes a lot more gas flow to light up to get on boost. And that's where you have the problem with smoke when you hit the throttle because it just doesn't react very fast and a P-pump doesn't give a sh whether there's any air there. It just does whatever your foot tells it to and puts fuel in. So that's where you get your, uh, your smoke until things become efficient. So what we're trying to do here is put a turbine on, a turbo on that's gonna come on boost fast. So this is supposed to be the duck's guts. I got it from Matt at Double Duty Diesel in Sydney. Uh, super helpful guy. Uh, another thing about this turbo is it doesn't have a wastegate. It's basically a free float, so it just it just makes whatever boost the engine can allow um, as a system. It does, however, have a spring assembly on a wastegate valve that just is there for exhaust manifold pressure relief if it were to get high enough. So most of it's on there. Just got to do a couple more fab things, whack the compressor cover on, join some things up. And then we're going to jump under the car and address the gearbox mount issue. Uh, so it's got a s sort of solidish gearbox mount at the moment. It's very noisy and vibratey, albeit um, obviously brake proof. <laughs> so we're going to change it to just um, some rubber mounts. These are actually original uh, just patrol gearbox mounts. So there's two of them. So they're not going to work in the original format, but we're going to just make some, fabricate some bracketry and stuff and sit them on that and uh, see how it goes. Let's get stuck into it. Something, something, Captain Snap Ring. This one's not as bad as the original Captain Snap Ring. At least it's got a place to grab hold of it. Snap.
hey, I've got a good idea. Let's weld this thing and then modify it and then weld it again and then cut it off and weld it again. Sounds like what we do. Just finished the transmission mount. This is the old mount. It's basically just a um, like a shackle bush, which is what we use for engine mounts quite a bit. Um, they, they're usually okay for engine mounts as far as vibration transmission, particularly on a full chassis car. But in my experience, as a trans transmission mount, the, because of the proximity to where you're sitting inside the car, the transfer of noise and vibration is is much higher when you use them at for trans. So this is obviously made for a competition car like a uh, winch truck or whatever. So um, it's fine for actually mounting it, but the noise is a problem if you want to, if your missus wants to drive it or you don't want to get your balls vibrated off every time you're idle. So what I did was just go down to a local parts shop and just fuss it through all their stuff. I originally bought a couple of original patrol mounts, um, which is what I'd used on my Duramax, but this engine is further back or there's no space there anyway, so I couldn't use them. So I went and saw Jai down at Auto Pro. He's a champion, one of the best parts guys I know. Uh, and he said, how about this thing here? You should use it because it's off a Jeep, which he's a Jeep guy, so don't hold that against him. He's, he's also a good dude, but everyone has their illnesses. Uh, so it actually worked really well. It's nice and low profile, which was a requirement, um, and it's wide enough so to handle the load so I just went around ground everything off used the original plate that was on the back here and just uh, sort of made it into an angle plate gusseted it same here this runs back along and gets welded onto the cross member on the top here a couple of little gussets there bolt her up sounds easy but took about five, five hours so I suppose that's a drop in the ocean compared to every, the rest of the car uh, the other thing I did when I had the turbo off was put some bolt-in Welsh plugs. As you know, the Welsh plug blew out on the uh, dyno. And it turns out that's common as for 6BTs when you start revving them harder than they're designed for, which is not much at all. So I got them off uh, double duty. Um, super easy to fit, easier to fit than a normal Welsh plug. So um, highly recommended if you're going to do something like this, probably just stick them in when you to begin with, instead of having to do it afterwards. I reckon we're mostly done. I'm sort of pretty much done with this. Um, I still haven't done anything with the shifter, but that's not a deal breaker, so might be time to just go and drive it a bit and see how we see how we enjoy it. Wanna go for a drive? Yeah, can I drive? I can drive and you can talk, because you can't talk and drive. How much money you got? I got nothing. Good About three feet. <laughs> that's not enough. <laughs> Pretty obvious to see Joel Smith's comment, but who's only here for Skid Factory? Let me know. Let me comment. Triple A Aardvark only here for Skid Factory.
Oh, it's so much better. Yeah, it doesn't bang into drive and vibrate. It's I good. World of difference, huh? Boost hose. <laughs> I've got a screwdriver, so there's not much point. That smoky ass, bro. That scared the absolute crap out of me. <coughs> oh, gosh. Hey, mate. Son? Did you blow? Cool. Joking. Holy. And they asked me if I got any money. Yeah, you're driving, so it's your fault. I got following. no money at all. Well, there goes that. There's the turbine. There goes that idea. Wow. So just started just down the road or what? Yeah. I just blew the front cover off the turbo. Oh. <laughs> Bowser. I'm shaking. <laughs> uh, it's alright, it's only brand new. <laughs> Sorry bro. <laughs> Well, maybe we should just end the episode here then. <laughs> We're just, um, you know, the Flying West Roastery. Oh, hang on, what's that road there called? What's that road there called? Hey? Yeah, great. So there's like a block of land just after Gray's Road. Is that what you call you when you've done yourself a mischief, Alan? I was about to say, that's probably the best description for it is we've done ourselves a mischief or you've done me a mischief. Hang on a second. <laughs> you were driving. <laughs> hard on the gear. So we've had a bit of a... I'm cursed. I'm going to call it an explosion, but we're not sure why yet. We'll pull it apart when we get home, but we just got to get a tow truck. So the cover's off, obviously. Um, the turbine has gone out and ground its way through there, so I don't imagine that probe's much good anymore. Um, this, this is, exhaust housing is actually broken from the, from the, uh, explosion. But we don't know why it's happened. It could have been this, this could have let go and it, that blew off and then, then once everything falls apart, stuff blows up. It's cars, bro. Good turbo though, it goes good. <laughs> Sounds good. Where's the turbine? Is that a hole there? Oh. It's somewhere, it might be on the road. Such a lovely day to be working outside, Alan. It is. Middle of winter. Terrible. So what's the plan? Take the turbo off. And then? Figure out what happened. Yep. Replace it. Find the turbine and put that in the pool room. Yeah, I don't know where it is though. It's cut. We'll have to check the exhaust. It's stuck in someone's tire and someone's got a puncture now. Goes to show you how much power there is in that thing. In the turbine itself. And here we have an exploded view of the common turbocharger. That is a mischief, Alan. All parts shown, except the turbine, which is 
unknown whereabouts. It's on the side of the road or maybe still in the exhaust and also about this much shaft. So we have done a mischief. That's clear. Is it, I, yes. I find it funny that you're still smiling. <laughs> I've been working on cars for a long time, I know. It's like you're excited. That shit happens. You're excited that I've blown it up. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you blew it up. Ex it you, blew up. You were driving, so we did, didn't we do the whole, you break it, you bought it thing? Or how much money you got? I got nothing. Got About three feet. <laughs> That's not enough. <laughs> so, you know, it makes me, you know, I'm not too worried about it because I know that you're going to transfer some money to me shortly. This is my fault. Well, I partly blame Captain Snapring, as we all know, is the mortal enemy of the Allen. Um, this wasn't, I didn't fit this properly. It goes in here with great difficulty. Um, we've got footage of it um, that we went back over trying to figure out what the hell happened. But if you saw the footage of when, the, when we pulled over on the side of the road, this was off, just sitting there. So, the only way that can fall off is if this doesn't, isn't holding it on properly. And this is a, a um, formidable beast to, as far as tension and stuff goes. So um, I had a bit of trouble getting it on as I do with Captain Snapring. So I must not have got it in there properly. So it, it fits into a groove here with great difficulty. And we could see that I had this bit in properly, but this was sort of a little bit sticking out when we go over the footage and if it's like that it means it's not in properly back here so basically 30 something psi boost it just it just blew off the front which is the huge whoosh noise which sound, it sounded like a uh, um, boost hose blowing off pretty common um, so after that happened either this got pinched because it was you know spinning at 100,000 RPM and all of a sudden something tried to stop it and the shaft broke so this is just in front of the bearing the front bearing which is there or the turbine was working very very hard uh, there's a massive amount of energy in a turbine to drive this that's its job this these just don't just freewheel they there's a huge load on them to create that boost pressure and when that blows off, all of a sudden you've got this freewheeling effect and the turbine just overspeeds and, and stuff breaks. So um, either or, turbine exits. It's pretty much taken most of the uh, core with it, which is all this stuff. Some of that was in there, some of it was in the exhaust. Uh, there's, a, there's a bearing. Uh, bent all this. These are the plates that hold these on. Split a hole in here. I think it's got a crack somewhere else as well, maybe down there. Made its way out. We can see its path, it's pretty apparent. So it's rolling its way around here at a huge amount of knots. Tried to get out there but didn't quite make it, that would have been interesting. And then continued on. Um, we can't hear it in the exhaust so we don't know where it is. But that's neither here nor there, it's gone. So. There's a bit of a lesson here. I'd, I like to call it personal responsibility, which is something that isn't always a thing. If you, do, if you mess around with a brand new turbo and take things like the compressor cover off and weld things onto it, you pretty much own it. It's, you're messing with it. I, I clocked this, welded stuff onto it, and put it back on again. And I've done this hundreds of times, thousands, whatever. Doesn't mean I can't make a mistake. So don't blame other people when you know it's your fault because that's not cool. We got Matt um, from Double Duty who supplied the turbo on the blower. We both pretty much came to the same conclusion after we pulled it off and took photos of it that, that this, this is virtually impossible for, this, for that to pop off when that rings in properly. So obviously that's my fault. Matt's going to help us out a bit. Um, 
This wasn't a freebie. I paid for this turbo, so don't be thinking that it doesn't matter because I didn't pay for it, because I did. Um, but you still got to accept your own responsibility, which is what I'm doing. So he's going to send us another one. There's one left in stock, I think. Obviously, I've got to make a new dump pipe. Um, clean up a few other things. We have started the engine after we pulled the turbo off and bunged off the oil feed. It was a little bit cranky at first because it probably had a gut full of fuel from the... Uh, it was pretty much you were full throttle, I think, at the time. And then that works fine if it's got 30-something pound of boost, but when you take that boost away instantaneously, a lot of fuel goes in, so that spat out a bunch of soot and grot and that and then sort of cleared up and it sounds fine, so I'm not too worried about the engine itself. We'll... Um, Fit it back up, make a new dump pipe. Oh, I need a new um, probe as well. It, it's on the side of the road <laughs> with the turbine. We'll put it back together and continue on our merry way. I was only just saying before that I'm pretty much finished with the patrol, but you know. For sale, one non turbo 6D. <laughs> It's just called, it just called a 6B. Yeah. <laughs> 6B 24 valve P pump. No, nah, it's all good. We just put a new turbo on it and clean it up a bit and put it back together and off we go. We're pretty much done with it anyway. I'm just going to drive it around for a bit and see how I like it. Move on to all the other projects we've got doing and maybe get on to some car stuff. The transmission is way softer now too with that mount also. The, yeah, so... This was brilliant when it was when the snap ring was still on there. Um, it is much better. Like I'd, I'd already driven it a little bit, so um, it was only because Woody drove it that it broke because that's what he does. But it was fine. Like it, it's a, a big difference to the other turbo. Um, just just boost response basically. It's it felt like it went just as good to me. So unless you're doing dyno number um, rubbish, which doesn't really matter. Um, it's it's a winner as far as I'm concerned. Um, that's the other thing about patrols is you don't need 600 horsepower in a patrol, do you, Woody? No. You found out when you backed off after doing a full noise run and the thing tries to wag its tail off the road that the it's a big four-wheel drive and it's not really built for handling. So a um, lot of talk about 300 horsepower, beautiful perfect to drive even even 200 horsepower with heaps of diesel torque is good in them so uh, best not to get too carried away all right we'll regroup now be about the time to advertise those use your brain shirts <laughs> what about we do a captain snap ring shirt sure <laughs> this is going in the pool room which i don't have but maybe i'll just hang it up on the wall here it's one of those things that you we used to have a thing Moles and I used to have a thing hanging on the wall, which was a a pulley with a Subaru crank pulley with teeth on it. And one of the teeth was broken off and Moles spent days trying to figure out why it wouldn't run properly because they'll still run with one tooth missing. And it was uh, basically said, go back to basics, like a reminder. So maybe I'll put this up as my go back to basics reminder. Thanks for watching. Be good take responsibility. We'll see you next time. GoPro stop recording. GoPro stop recording. GoPro stop recording. GoPro stop time lapse. GoPro stop time lapse. GoPro stop time lapse. GoPro stop time lapse. GoPro stop recording.
my pocket over there. This is the first time you've actually blown something up on the show. Well, I didn't blow it up. You did for a start, but yeah. I think oh it's... no, the Fairlane tail shot. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's been that's a while though. That's about three years. And then the Welsh plug. Hang on, what else oh, has there been? The Welsh plug was no big deal. No massive carnage. Not a bad run. I thought it was rods out of something else. I was so scared. There's, there is um, oil on the mirror. The side mirror. <laughs> I couldn't see the rear view mirror to see all the smoke. I just thought it had blown off a pipe. Yeah, you were smiling. <laughs> Still smiling, bro. It's just a car. Don't get too carried away. It's just They're just machines. Park it and do something else, which is what I just did.